the reason why the sinner's prayer is purely useless and it does not help anyone to get saved is because of this. Now, how can I just come to you and tell you, repeat these words after me and uh, you will be saved? If I'm repeating these words, do I really understand? Because salvation is from a point of understanding. Unless you know your sin condition, you understand who you are, what you've done, why is God angry with you, why you should repent, then even if you repeat those lines, they will mean nothing. Because the reason why we have so many people in church nowadays who are just merely not saved, they're just sitting there. And every Sunday, the pastor always is praying for the same guys. How many want to rededicate their lives to God? They're always rededicating their lives to God. Why is this so? It is because people have never understood the truth. My friends, there is no way a sinner's prayer can save you. The sinner's prayer is basically a waste of time. Myself, I said that sinner's prayer for a thousand times. I said it over and over and over and over. I thought that by saying this sinner's prayer, I'll be saved. But something deep within me always kept on telling me, kid, there is a problem. There is a problem. If, if God comes today, you're not going to be able to make it. And I was wondering, how comes and I've said the sinner's prayer? How comes and I've done all these good things? How comes and I feel in my heart that I repeated that story? I repeated those lines. My friends, salvation is from a point of understanding. Unless you understand your sin condition, you can never be saved. Unless you understand why you need salvation, then for you, salvation will mean nothing. The reason people are in church and they don't know anything is because they have never understood that salvation they have never understood why in the first place why in the first place do i need even to be saved why in the first place people they think that oh why do i need salvation i'm, I'm a good guy i i do good i don't steal i don't abuse people i don't fornicate i don't do uh, any of those malicious things that are called sin but they do not understand that sin is a heart condition. Sin is a condition that we have from within. It's an inbuilt problem of all mankind. We have sin. We have what we call sin from within because it is, it is in our DNA. You see, the Bible tells us, by one man sin entered into the world. And that man was Adam. And by one man, sin was able to be conquered. And that man is Jesus Christ. Why and how comes sin entered through Adam? Do you understand the reason? Because Adam himself, God gave him a set of instructions and he did not follow. And that sin, that mindset, that desire of doing opposite, because it was now already in Adam, it went down all through his generation. And that's why you don't need to teach a child what sin is all about. He already knows. She already knows. You get, you, you, you get a child within no time when he or she starts recognizing things. They're already starting to do evil things. And you wonder, who taught these children how to do evil things? Because it is inclined in our DNA. It is purely in our DNA. And that's why it's very important for all of us to be able to tell people the nature of our problem. The nature of our problem, which is sin. And people think, oh, because I don't do this, I don't do that. I think uh, I'm a good person. No, you're not a good person. You're not a good person. Because sin is the transgression of the law. The Bible tells us whoever commits sin, in the book of First John chapter 3, verse, verse 4, whoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So if you break the law of God, you're a sinner. And it's not breaking like the Ten Commandments. Do you know how many laws are there in the Bible? In the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, there are about 613 laws that God has said. If you break one of these 613 laws, you're a sinner. My friend, do you even know the 613 laws? And do you even follow them? <laughs> we have all broken all of them. We have all broken all of them. So what makes you think that God will have mercy on you because, and you're a sinner? The only way God can have mercy on you is if you decide to take 
the gift that he has promised. He has said, okay, all you sinners, you deserve to die. The wages of sin is death. But then there is a gift of God that I'm giving you in replacement. If you don't want to die, then there is a gift of God, which is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So you take the death or you take the gift. Whatever you pick remains with you. And how do you access this gift? And what is that gift? This is the good news because we had a bad news. And that's why unless somebody knows there is a bad news, how can you give them the good news without the bad news? They have to understand. And once they hear this bad news, they understand the good news is Jesus Christ. That he is the good news. He is the one who came and died for our sins. He is the one who came and did all this for us. He took our punishment. He died for us at the cross so that if you believe, if you believe, my friend, you will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. His death, burial, and resurrection is what we call the good news, the gospel. And it's from a point of understanding this that you can only be able to be, believe. You cannot believe in something that you don't know. You cannot believe in what you have not heard. You cannot hear without a preacher. And a preacher cannot preach unless he has been sent and the Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. The Apostle Paul was given this mystery. He was told, okay, the reason I, Jesus, died was so that these people can be able to get salvation. And that's a mystery. Go and tell the others. And Paul tells us, he is a mystery. He is a mystery, my friends. It was not revealed by me, just myself thinking, but it was a revelation from Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. This gospel was a revelation from Jesus Christ. And he says, believe in this gospel and you shall be saved. Believe in this good news. How that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you believe in this good news, you shall be saved. My friends, if you want to be saved, you do not need to follow a set of rules. You just need to hear this good news, understand what happened, understand your sin condition, and tell God, God, now I see my sin condition. Now I see my problem. And if you've given an option out, please save me from this option out, with this option out that you have. And I tell you for sure, God says, whoever will come to me, I will in no way cast out. I will in no way cast out. doesn't matter you're a thief, you're a prostitute, you're a killer, you're a corrupt person, politician, you're all those kind of things. You're a hypocrite, my friend. It doesn't matter. You're a, you're a gay, you're a lesbian, you're what? You know, there are some things that people think, I've gotten too deep, I can't get out from this. Let me tell you, there's no sin that the blood of Jesus cannot wash. As long as you're still a human being, you still have your conscience, you still have your mind, mind, uh, mind and free will, and your emotions, that is the soul, you still have it within you, my friend, you can still be so saved. And that's why if you lose your soul, you lose your mind, free will, and emotions, you cannot think straight, you cannot have the right emotions to love God, you cannot have a free will, then now you have lost your soul and nothing can be done to you unless God removes you there by his own power. It is very difficult for you to be saved unless you have a straight mind to think and say, for sure God did this for me. Because salvation comes from a point of understanding. And the moment you believe, the seed of God comes in you. You have a new DNA and God will forever be with you. So the sinner's prayer cannot save you. What saves you, it is the understanding. You have to hear the knowledge. You have to get the knowledge of the truth. Have the knowledge of the truth and be saved.